Okay, let's come back to the second diagram. That is, the ice has converted into water. So now here we talk about conversion of water into water vapors or what happens when we start heating a liquid. Here the liquid is water and it is turning into the water vapors. This entire experimental setup is the same as the previous one. Right. Now we come back to the theory part. When we supply heat energy, we are continuously, see when we supplied heat to ice, it changed, it melt into liquid water. We are now continuously heating the liquid water. What do we observe here? We observe again the rise in the temperature readings in the thermometer. A certain temperature is reached where even when we continue to heat the water, the temperature does not rise or there is no increase in the temperature reading in the thermometer. So here in this case, when we start heating water, we see a change in the thermometer readings. So let's say 15 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree till the boiling point, till a certain point is reached 100 degree Celsius for water. And after this, even if we continue heating further, we do not see any increase in the temperature in the thermometer, right? How do we explain this particular concept? Well, here, when we supply heat energy to water, the particles in the liquid water start moving even faster. At a certain temperature, a point is reached when the particles have sufficient energy, enough energy to break free from the forces of attraction of each other. And at this temperature, the liquid starts changing into gas. Right? This is a boiling temperature. And how do we define the boiling point of the liquid? The temperature at which a liquid starts boiling, changing into water vapors or changing into the vapors, at the atmospheric pressure is known as boiling point. Now we say boiling is a bulk phenomenon. Bulk phenomenon means particles from the bulk or whole of the liquid gain enough energy to change into the vapor state. So when you start heating the liquid, right? So we find the particles from the bulk of the liquid start changing into the vapor state. So bulk means whole. The boiling point of water is 100 degree Celsius. We have to convert any Celsius temperature into Kelvin. Then we add 273 to the temperature reading in Celsius so that we get the reading in the Kelvin. So Kelvin temperature is 273 plus degree Celsius temperature. So if you have to convert 0 degree Celsius into Kelvin, you have to weigh 273 to 0. So the answer is 0 degree Celsius is equal to 273 Kelvin. Now we have been talking about when we start heating the liquid water, a temperature comes when there is no thermometer change, there is no change in the thermometer reading. Where does the heat energy go? Again, because the heat energy is not being shown in the thermometer, this hidden heat is the latent heat. And because we are talking about conversion of water into vapors, so this is latent heat of vaporization. And how do we define latent heat of vaporization? Something similar to what we have done in defining latent heat of fusion. So let's change this definition a bit to get the definition of latent heat of vaporization. Now read, the amount of heat energy that is required to change 1 kilogram of, so instead of solid here, we will say liquid into, here instead of a liquid, we will say gas at atmospheric pressure at its, right here, instead of melting point, we will say boiling point is known as latent heat of vaporization. So I repeat. The amount of heat energy that is required, the amount of heat energy that is required to change one kilogram of a liquid into gas 
at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point is known as latent heat of vaporization right now you may be wondering why we are talking about 1 kilogram of liquid uh, why not 1 liter of liquid well uh, in this definition it hardly makes a difference here you can use 1 kilogram of a liquid now we come to the next and the more important point here the way we have discussed about the particles of water and particles of ice which one of them have got more energy here also we discuss the same thing particles in steam that is water vapor at 100 degrees celsius have more energy than the water at the same temperature that means the water at zero degree that at 100 degrees celsius and steam at 100 degrees celsius steam particles have got more heat energy than the water particles at the same temperature this is the water which is boiling water right and why is this so this is because the particles in the steam the particles in the steam have absorbed the latent heat of vaporization this is the extra energy that the particles have absorbed to come into the gaseous state or in the vapor state and that is why we say that steam causes more severe burns than the boiling water right let's now summarize whatever we have done so far solid state changes into liquid state when we heat it on further heating liquid state changes into the gas state we can reverse it that is the gas state can be converted back into the liquid state when we cool the gases and on further cooling or reducing the temperature the liquid state changes into the solid state so increase in the temperature changes solid state into the liquid state and from liquid to gases decrease the temperature the gaseous state changes into the liquid and the liquid state changes into the solid 